Hello, and welcome to another episode in the Georgia Workers' Compensation video series. My name is Jason Perkins. I'm an attorney who specializes in handling Georgia workers' compensation cases. I created this series of videos to provide people who've been hurt at work in Georgia with helpful information about Georgia's workers' compensation laws and the benefits they should receive under those laws. Now, let's jump straight into today's topic. Today, I'd like to talk with you about workers' compensation nursing home injuries. Working in a nursing home is a very physically demanding job. While some residents do not require a whole lot of assistance at all, many residents require assistance with almost anything that they're going to do. Um, because employees in a nursing home have to provide resident, resident care, they can often suffer injuries when they're lifting or helping move a resident from one place to another. Um, nursing home employees are also exposed to dangerous conditions. Sometimes there are slippery floors, uh, which can cause someone to slip or trip and fall. Um, also, there can be dangerous equipment that individuals have to work with. Because of this, employees in nursing homes can often suffer serious work-related injuries. When they do suffer these injuries and a Georgia workers' compensation claim is created as a result, one thing that you need to know is what benefits Georgia workers' compensation law provides. Before I jump into that, it's important to know that this video is only talking about workers' compensation benefits in a Georgia workers' compensation claim. Each state has different workers' compensation laws, so this this video will only apply if you're talking about a Georgia workers' compensation claim. In Georgia, there are three basic types of workers' compensation benefits. Those benefits are wage loss benefits, medical benefits, and permanent partial disability benefits. Wage loss benefits are two types in Georgia. There are temporary total disability benefits and temporary partial disability benefits. Both of these pay for wage loss as a result of a work-related injury. Temporary total disability benefits are paid to you when you're completely out of work as a result of a work-related injury. Because nursing homes are very physically demanding work, it's often the case that if you have an injury that completely takes you out of work or maybe even restricts you from work, there may not be any work that you can perform. So you may receive temporary total disability benefits as a result of that injury. Temporary partial disability benefits or benefits are paid to you when you're working but making less money as a result of a work-related injury. These are often paid when you're able to return to some sort of light-duty work after an injury, but that light-duty job pays you less per hour or maybe pay, provides less hours per week. So you're still having wage loss as a result of your injury. The second benefit, medical benefits. Um, in Georgia, medical benefits pay for the medical treatment and testing you need as a result of your injury. Um, so in other words, if you suffer a back injury, you need to go see the doctor or you need medication or physical therapy or surgery. Those are the type of things that are covered by medical benefits. It's the workers' compensation insurance company paying these benefits. Um, now, there are certain things that have to be satisfied for them to be responsible. Um, the medical treatment or testing you need has to be with an authorized workers' compensation doctor, has to be related to your injury, and has to be reasonable and necessary. Also, it must occur within the time limits that apply for you to get medical benefits for your injury. Those time limits can be different in different cases, but in most cases, it's 400 weeks from when your injury occurred. The third benefit is permanent partial disability benefits. These are benefits that are paid to you if you end up having a permanent partial impairment as a result of your work-related injury. Under Georgia law, in order for you to receive permanent partial disability benefits, your doctor has to determine that you have a permanent impairment and has to rate you using the fifth edition of the American Medical Association's Guides to the Evaluation of Permanent Impairment. If your doctor determines you do have a permanent impairment using that book, the doctor will give you something called the permanent partial disability rating, and that rating will entitle you to a certain number of weeks of permanent partial disability benefits. Now that we've talked about the types of workers' compensation benefits that you can receive, let's talk about 
what do you have to do to file for workers' compensation benefits in Georgia? In some situations, you don't have to file for workers' compensation benefits at all. You simply report your work-related injury to your employer, and your employer notifies their insurance company, and they start handling your workers' compensation claim. When this happens, usually they're going to send you to a doctor to get checked out and start paying for that medical treatment. If you're out of work as a result of your injury, they'll start paying you wage loss benefits. So sometimes the employer and the insurance company just voluntarily accept the claim. Now, your employer may not voluntarily accept your workers' compensation claim. Sometimes they may file a formal denial of your claim or just not do anything. So you notify them of the injury and you just get nothing in return. When this happens, you or an attorney representing you is going to have to take some action in order to file a claim. Um, there must, there's a certain form that has to be filed by the State Board of Workers' Compensation. It's called the Form WC-14. It has to be properly filed with the State Board of Workers' Compensation within a certain period of time, and it must be properly completed. If you don't meet these requirements, then you're not going to have properly filed your claim. Now, even in situations where the employer or insurance company do voluntarily accept your workers' compensation claim, there can still be situations where you do need to file paperwork later in order to meet certain deadlines for workers' compensation benefits. So even where a claim is voluntarily accepted by the employer or workers' compensation insurance company, it does not mean that you're completely off the hook with regard to filing paperwork. Um, in certain situations, if paperwork's not filed, you could lose your right to pursue certain types of workers' compensation benefits. As I mentioned earlier, nursing home work can be very physically demanding. So one question that commonly comes up when someone suffers a work-related injury to a nursing home is what if they are unable to return to their regular job even after they get medical treatment. Um, this unfortunately can happen with very serious injuries. They can, cover, they can cause permanent work restrictions, and these permanent work restrictions may prevent someone from doing their regular duty job. If you end up with permanent work restrictions, Georgia workers' compensation law is going to provide that you're paid wage loss benefits for a certain period of time. But there are limits on how long you can get wage loss benefits under Georgia's workers' compensation law. In most types of cases, those wage loss benefits are limited to 350 or 400 weeks from when your injury occurs. Now, that sounds like it's a long time, but there's a few things you need to consider when thinking about that. Um, most people who suffer injuries are probably going to work more than 350 or 400 weeks into the future. 350 weeks is about six and a half years, 400 weeks is about seven and a half years. So if you planned on working longer than that and you suffer an injury and your wage loss benefits are going to be limited that period of time, then the workers' compensation law is not going to compensate you for not being able to return to work in the future. The second thing that's important to consider is just because you're eligible for wage loss benefits for that long doesn't mean that you're going to receive them that long. The workers' compensation insurance company is a business, and they're going to try to pay you as little as possible. So even though they might have to pay for up to 350 or 400 weeks from when your injury occurred, they're going to do what they can to get the benefits limited to a shorter period of time than that including trying to get the doctor to say that you're better and that you can go back to work so they can, they can stop paying the wage loss benefits before then. And the final thing that's important to consider is there is an exception to this 350 or 400 week limit. Um, if your injury qualifies for what's called a catastrophic designation, then you may be able to draw wage loss benefits even past those limits. Catastrophic designations apply to very severe injuries. If you suffer a very severe injury, which causes permanent work restrictions, it's important to reach out to an attorney and find out if you may qualify for a catastrophic designation. It can be important to do that sooner rather than later because there's also certain other benefits 
that come with qualifying for a catastrophic designation. I hope you found the information in this video helpful. If you have, please consider two things before you go. First, I'd really appreciate if you give this video a like or a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel if you'd like to be notified of future videos in the Georgia Workers' Compensation video series. Second, if you've got workers' compensation questions, please reach out to get answers. I offer free consultations in Georgia workers' compensation cases. If you'd like to set one of those up, there's two easy ways you can do so. The first is by calling the phone number at the bottom of the screen, and the other is by reaching out to a store website, which is www.perkinslawtalk.com. Just click on and submit the free consultation request form there, and a member of our team will reach out to you and get a consultation scheduled. I'd like to thank you again for watching this video today. I'd like to wish you the best of luck as you recover from your injuries.